Um, so I feel like my journey is really unique because it took me so long to get diagnosed with endometriosis. It probably wasn't until my mid thirties. And even at that point, I was working with um, physical therapists that specialized in pelvic floor. And even they were trying to convince me, you don't have endometriosis. Like that's not, you know, that's not what's wrong with you. And so thinking back, um, I think I did struggle with my periods. They were always painful, they were always bad, um, but I just toughed it out, you know, and thinking it was normal, everybody, you know, has cramps, everybody suffers like this. Um, but with endometriosis, it's progressive, as we know. And as we get older, it just gets worse and worse and worse. Um, and I think I was fortunate that I had child in my early 30s and it wasn't until after that where the symptoms really became debilitating um i mean i was fortunate that i was able to work but i had so much pain a couple times i ended up in the emergency room and it just it wasn't until then doctors started to be like okay you know this is endometriosis and for me I did, I'm a scientist, so I do a lot of reading. Um, I, I went to literature and I looked, you know, I did a lot of research about endometriosis and what it was, and the options they had for me really weren't great um, because it was a hysterectomy, which, you know, reading how well that works, it's not very good. Yeah. And so I was like, well, you know, why go through a major surgery if, you know, the outcome is just gonna come right back. And then the other option was birth control, which I really suffered with. I have a lot of side effects on birth control um, and I just don't feel great. So it was, it was really hard. Um, and I remember going back to a doctor and I was just like, what else can you do for me? And she essentially shut me down. It's like, all I can do for you is give you a hysterectomy or prescribe you birth control. And that was it. And she was almost angry with me. And I, at that point, you know, I was just like, there, no, like I didn't want to accept it. There had to be another way. What really kind of set me on this path was um, I had struggled a lot um, with the pain with the chronic fatigue and this all led to like depression and just not feeling great um and i'd been on this path for you know eight years or so just feeling terrible and about this time this was when my father died and my dad was estranged and i didn't really think this was gonna affect me that much yeah. but it really kind of um filled me with grief and it wasn't really um, that his life, you know, I really missed him and stuff. It was more I was grieving for the life that he didn't have. But it really led me to think about my own life. And <laughs> sorry, it's hard. It's okay. I just had no idea um, how to get out of the headspace I was in. I was really kind of feeling trapped. And yeah, looking back, I just felt like I was doing everything I could, yeah. but now I know I just wasn't. Like I wasn't listening to my body. I was just forcing myself to essentially suck it up and get through the day and just do what essentially other people asked me to do. Yeah. And it wasn't working. For me, I really struggled, I think, emotionally, just, you know, with having the condition for so long. And I noticed that I had really um, alienated myself, just kind of pulled away because I wasn't feeling well, just dealing with the fatigue and the chronic pain. It really was like every day was a struggle. Like it was hard to get out of bed. It was hard to just make it through the day. And then it was just like sleep and do it again. And it was just like on autopilot the whole time. And I thinking about it, I had all these pains. I knew something was wrong with me, you know, and I would just ignore like all this pain and all this suffering and just be like, I can get through this. I can get through it. 
And I remember like I was contemplating quitting my job because it was all I could do to get through the day. And I knew I wasn't doing a good job. And I felt like I needed to be taking days off to stay in bed and rest. But I mean, I was kind of split because at the same time, I didn't feel like that was gonna get me any better. At the beginning, 10 months ago, um, I just wasn't able to exercise and it was mainly my digestion. Like I wasn't able to digest food. I wasn't able to absorb nutrients. I didn't have any energy. And I was just at this point in my life where every day was a struggle. And I just didn't want to live like that anymore. And so, and this was when I really like started looking for people and reaching out for help and then i was doing more research just on healing endometriosis naturally um i went online and good old amazon <laughs> that's where i found you because i was like searching for you know books on healing endometriosis naturally and i came across your book and then i downloaded it and i read it in, in about two days <laughs> But I also wasn't really focusing on self-care and what I could do to make myself feel better. I was just kind of essentially focusing on all the negatives, which was making me worse. And so to kind of start focusing on myself in a positive way and trying to feel better, it just kind of, it started to turn things around. I can remember even in the beginning during the 21 day challenge, just seeing little glimpses of hope. And it's okay. I think the other big thing is, was I really had given up on myself and didn't really think that, you know, things were gonna get better. Yeah. And it's just so hard because I'm like 45 and it's like I should really have so much of my life ahead of me but it's just you know kind of felt like things were just going downhill so fast um, when I applied to the foundation program I had kind of waited and I wasn't sure and I really struggled with spending money on myself and stuff and I was trying to like apply online and it said it was full and I was completely devastated I was like I don't know what I'm gonna do if I can't get into this because I was just felt like I had nothing, I had nothing left. And it's just like, I knew, you know, when I wasn't getting, I thought I wasn't getting in that I had to do this. And I feel like my mindset has really changed. Like I'm not, I don't believe life is a struggle anymore. I've got like a lot more hope and I'm optimistic about the future. So I've seen, like I can really tell and now I, like I just listen more and I know what will happen if I don't listen to my body. It's like, it's gonna not work. Really, it was the only thing that put all the pieces together because I knew like I needed to emotionally heal. I knew I felt better working on my diet. I knew there was a lot of the key elements I needed. I needed to regulate my hormones. Um, and the other thing I think that really has worked for me is listening to my gut. So like if you can really feel it, like don't overthink it, but just do you feel this is right for you, then you should, you should do it. Well, just thinking about my underlying beliefs, um, because I really did believe life was meant to be a struggle. I believed life was filled with suffering and life was meant to be hard at the beginning of the program. Like I just, I felt that. And that has really over the course of the last 10 months changed. Like I don't believe that anymore. That's awesome. And I can see that's making you feel emotional again. So share us, what is it that that's touching you? Well, <laughs> It's just I've come so far and really looking back on it, it's been such a short period of time. Um, but I just, I mean, where I'm at in my life now is a good place, but I just see the potential of where I could go and I can do so much more and just am able to connect with happiness and have a life full of joy. Yeah. Um, but I think it was really that you believed in me and that I could get through this and it just started to <laughs> turn things around slowly. Now I'm just looking forward to 
a lot of things in my life. Um, I didn't believe it was possible. I, and so it really is amazing, like over the course of 10 months, that so much has changed. Um, and I think a lot of it was, it was an emotional journey for me and learning how to deal with stress and learning to, you know, when I am stressed, to take extra care of myself and just listen to what I needed. Yeah. That's the other thing I would say to people, like, you're worth it. Just, it's totally worth it to keep going, even when you don't think you can. Just, if you fall off one day, just, just keep going. Oh, I would say believe in yourself because you are worth it. Um, it was hard for me to spend the money on myself, but I think it really was the only way I, and I kind of knew that, that I was going to get better because I knew I needed all these different parts of me to kind of work together to do everything I could to heal. and. Just with everything I'd been through, I was so committed to changing my life. And for me, really, I think it was the only, it really was the only way. It's been a long journey, but now, like at the end, it really doesn't seem like that much time. Um, and already, I'm forgetting. I had to go back to my journals to remind myself of what a horrible place I was in 10 months ago. I, I mean, in the short time, I've come so far. I would say thank you, Wendy. Like, the journey's been hard at times and it's been long, but it's it's been like so worth it. Um, I never imagined I, in such a short time, could have such a change in like my mindset and how my body was feeling um, and just my overall health and just feeling like more in control of my life again and so it's been it's been great and so worth it <laughs> thank you i'm just happy like i made it through over to the other side <laughs>